In today's episode, we'll be delving into the curious and somewhat perplexing history of the rotary engine. We'll look at the latest developments in the field and ponder whether we might actually see these engines in our cars again. Production has supposedly started, but is it really happening? Let's explore this mysterious journey together. The story of the rotary piston engine is quite an enigma. It dates back to the First World War when aviation pioneers started using clergy engines, which were later refined by Bentley. These air-cooled engines featured an odd number of cylinders, ranging from 7 to 11, each operating on a four-stroke cycle. The entire cylinder block revolved around the crankshaft, propelling it into motion. The most powerful 11-cylinder version could generate an impressive 200 horsepower. Although these engines were relatively lightweight and simple in design, they had a high oil consumption rate and other drawbacks like oil leakage risks in aviation. They also produced a gyroscopic effect. But despite these shortcomings, did they really perform as well as claimed? Fast forward a bit, and we meet Felix Wankel, a German engineer who developed the now-famous Wankel engine featuring a triangular rotor. Thanks to the NSU company, which bought the license, the engine underwent further refinements and started to be mass-produced. It found applications in chainsaws, motorcycles, and eventually automobiles. Some NSU Wankel rotary versions were tested at over 20,000 RPM, but the rotor started to deform due to centrifugal forces. The first car to feature this engine was the NSU Spider, boasting a rear-mounted half-liter engine that produced 54 horsepower. For the 1960s, the car weighed just 700 kilograms. However, despite its promising features, the Wankel engine had a recurring issue with rotor tip seals. These seals often failed before the car could even reach 50,000 kilometers, leading to warranty headaches that eventually brought down the company. NSU continued to address these engine problems even after the warranty period, a factor that contributed to its acquisition by Audi. Many companies saw great potential in Wankel's rotary design, including Mercedes, Citron, General Motors, and even Lada. However, Mazda took it a step further. While collaborating with NSU, Mazda invested heavily in developing the unique engine type. Even after NSU's bankruptcy, Mazda continued to work independently to address the engine's issues, significantly improving its durability and environmental performance. This led to the creation of iconic vehicles like the Mazda RX-7 and RX-8. But did they really solve all the problems? Much like the piston engine in most of our cars, Wankel's rotary engine operates on a four-stroke cycle. But instead of using a piston with reciprocating motion, it employs a triangular rotor. This rotor sits on an eccentric shaft, tracing an intriguing path known as an epitrachoid, a movement pattern also likened to the motion of the moon around the sun. The operating cycle begins with the intake phase, where air and fuel are drawn in. As the rotor spins, the combustion chamber's volume decreases, leading to compression, followed by the power stroke involving ignition and expansion. Finally, the exhaust phase occurs as waste gases are expelled. One advantage of this design is fewer moving parts, eliminating the need for reciprocating motions and consequently reducing vibrations. This allows for higher RPMs. However, the challenge of improving rotary seals remains, and this has historically led to issues like increased oil consumption, diminished compression, and reduced lifespan. Mazda claims to have largely learned to mitigate these challenges, but can they really overcome the rapid tightening of environmental regulations? Mazda paused rotary engine production in 2012, but the news is that in 2023 they resumed production with an improved rotary engine design. Currently, they are focusing on developing two vehicle versions, one for the Mazda MX-30 for everyday use and another high-performance variant, the concept of which has already been unveiled. An increasing number of patents are appearing for its layout, making it an exciting time for rotary engine enthusiasts. But are these patents translating into real-world advancements? As for Mazda's first vehicle equipped with a new Wankel rotary engine, the MX-30 REV is a hybrid with the updated rotary engine serving as a generator. Unlike traditional rotary engines that often employ two rotor sections with a 1.3-liter displacement, 
this new hybrid version features just a single rotor section with a mere 0.8 liter capacity, generating 74 horsepower at 4,500 RPM. Despite its smaller size, the engine is designed for increased efficiency, better reliability, and reduced fuel consumption. Mazda has made some interesting tweaks to address these goals. For instance, fuel is now directly injected into the combustion chamber, not the intake as in older models. This change arose from their realization that injecting fuel into the intake led to some fuel being misdirected into the exhaust, resulting in unburned fuel escaping through the tailpipe and consequently higher fuel consumption. The new engine also incorporates a revamped exhaust gas recirculation system to enhance low-end torque. The engine block is now made of aluminum, reducing its weight further. The walls are coated with ceramic material to minimize gaps and friction. Thicker seals are also employed at the rotor tips for longer durability. As for the electric motor, it's directly connected to the eccentric shaft of the rotary engine, eliminating the need for additional components. This electric motor serves dual roles. It acts as a starter and also helps the rotary engine quickly reach optimal RPM, enhancing overall efficiency. Once the ideal RPM is reached, the electric motor operates at a fixed speed, functioning as a generator. Most impressively, this very compact and lightweight internal combustion engine is seamlessly integrated with electric motors on the same axis. This layout has no adverse effect on the system's design or interior space, maintaining the benefits of the fully electric version. You can use this car as an electric vehicle with a range of about 85 kilometers on a single charge, sufficient for city driving. Additionally, the incredibly compact and lightweight rotary engine generator can kick in as needed. The company claims that long-distance fuel consumption will be just 1 liter per 100 kilometers. Production of these groundbreaking rotary engines has already commenced, and sales are expected to start soon. But can these claims be trusted? The second anticipated vehicle is the sporty version of the Mazda RX. Mazda has repeatedly announced in recent years that they are planning to revive the rotary engine specifically for use in sports cars. A few years ago, we saw a glimpse of this vision in a concept car, and now a series of patents have surfaced, revealing the layout of a coupe that closely resembles the Mazda RX vision concept. According to the patent descriptions, the vehicle will employ a three-section rotary engine, likely boasting a total displacement of 2.4 liters and generating over 300 horsepower. Position behind the rotor is a 36-horsepower electric motor that seems to serve a similar role as in the MX-30. It acts as a starter, a generator, and fills in torque gaps at low RPMs. All of this power is transferred to the rear axle via a drive shaft. Up front, two more electric motors are evident, one at each wheel, each delivering 23 horsepower. These motors not only add power, but also enable energy recovery during braking. Another intriguing detail from the patents is the use of dual battery packs, which can operate at either 48 volts or 96 volts depending on the load. This flexible setup reportedly helps to significantly reduce weight. With this kind of innovative engineering, there is a strong chance that Mazda will once again create an iconic sports car powered by a rotary engine and perhaps even surpass existing benchmarks. But will they really achieve this? So, what are your thoughts on this? Is Mazda truly on the brink of a rotary engine renaissance, or is this just another hopeful vision? Feel free to drop a comment below and don't forget to like this video. Have a great day, guys.